you're trying to get into this high class fraternity. The name of it is Tap a Keg of Beer. And in order to show that you got the guts to be able to do it, they say, okay, this is the test you're going to have to pass. And then if you pass it, you'll be a member of Tap a Keg of Beer. So they take and they show the guy a big bowl of night crawlers. You all know what night crawlers are, those big, great, big, slimy worms that you find that night. So, so when you take and eat this entire bowl of night crawlers, then we'll consider that you passed the test. Then they blindfold them, give them a bowl of spaghetti, and start taking the spaghetti, and they have their mouth open, and they're dropping the spaghetti in. What do you think happens to most of the guys there? They start up chucking because their belief is they're eating night crawlers. And as long as they have the belief that it's night crawlers, they're going to be throwing up in response to it. Now, if you said, okay, this is a good Italian fraternity, and in order to get into the pizza pie fraternity, you have to show you can eat a lot of spaghetti and you took and you brought up the spaghetti, probably none of them would have any difficulty trying to down that. So in that case, then your belief is going to be really critical. Uh, in terms of other stuff I guess I could share, Don was talking with you about the importance of uh, belief and how it could have a powerful effect on your life. It was a little over six years ago now I was diagnosed with uh, cancer, angiosarcoma, which is cancer of the blood cells and connective tissue. Uh, it affected my nose, so I had to have my entire nose. So I looked like a big uh, Halloween uh, pumpkin. It was just a huge, big space here in the middle. I could have taken and easily put an egg into that empty space. Um, and they said your life expectancy, the median age, would be 15 months. So that half of the people would be dead within 15 months. The other half are on the downhill slope. Um, that was not you know, terribly encouraging news because I can tell you whenever somebody talks to you and uses your name and cancer in the same sentence, it scares the hell out of me. And so I wanted to try and see uh, if I could have some effects upon that. So I was trying to debate whether I could do that just with pure mind power trying to change the cancer around me to totally disappear. But it was, it was pretty far gone, and so I thought, no, let's go ahead and take the nose off. So this is a, a substitute nose. The way they created this is they took a big patch of skin. That's where I got this sort of Harry Potter Z up here. So they took a big patch of skin from up here. There was an artery and a vein attached to that. Came down through here, out through the eyebrow, took cartilage out of my ears, and put the cartilage out of the ears. And here, put all of that skin over it with the artery and the vein attached. And then it was like a big, called a pedicle for like about three months here. It's almost like you had this big finger over your eye. And then they were able to cut that one away. I had a dream around that time because I was trying to debate about how willing I was to work with the cancer people there. And so I decided, okay, we'll go ahead and we'll take the nose off. And they did, and that was the way I described it. So that's what I was left with as the, uh, as the new artificial nose. I had a dream, because I'd had a gathering with all my family, and I was like, you know, I'm getting pretty old now. I don't know. I don't know whether I want to go through all of this radical surgery they wanted to, besides the surgery they wanted to take, and blister my face every day until it was just blistered every day for a month and so forth. And I wasn't too thrilled about that question. So then I found out that they 
unless I agreed to do all of the blistering, they wouldn't agree to take the nose off. So then I had an epiphany that, well, that would be okay to go ahead with all of burning my face every day for the, for the month. So they went ahead and did the surgery. Then I had another epiphany that I didn't want the surgery. I didn't want the radiation after. So by now, they couldn't do very much. I couldn't go back and get the nose out of the wastebasket and put it back up. So I never did do the radiation. I decided to just stay with the mental imagery and so on. So I had a dream, and in the dream, there was somebody who was going along on a bicycle up a big hill, and up here was a great big stone bridge, huge big stones going across. And the person went up on the bicycle and then was going to try and get over the bridge, but they didn't have enough speed and just smashed into it, just sort of kind of like a roadrunner cartoon where you see and they just hit the thing and it down. And then in the dream, I was just yelling out loud, oh my God, my God, that person's dead. They're, 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 they're dead. They're, they're just I was really, really upset in the dream. Then later went and looked closer to where the person would have hit that and it was, I thought no way they could possibly have survived that huge collision. And it was like a river bank there and along the side it looked like there was sort of a cave in the way. And I went into the cave and looked around a bit and then the person was there but they were now alive. Now in the dream was like, my God, oh, it's a miracle. This person is alive, they're alive, they, they survived, they're alive. And then there was another smaller uh, individual child there. And it was in, ah, this, this child is, I, I can't believe it. This is a, a really miracle, you know, that they really, really have survived this. So that dream I thought about for a long time, where they were convinced it was going to be a fairly quick outcome, which was going to be death in terms of my case. And I decided, no, if the dream had indicated you could take certain death and you're going to be hit and smashed like that, but you could recover, and it was almost like going into some sort of a embryonic uh, place when I went into the cave. So it was almost like the person was reborn again and now is starting this new life. So that that's what I want to hold on for my imagery and pay attention to that. So that dream was a very, very important one for me. So let's say they gave me medium it would have been 15 months back then. And it's now been over six years. And so and I think it's going to be a lot more years beyond that. At least it won't be yet. I don't believe it can't do that. Chasing wild women and women doing too much liquor or something, maybe, but not, I think, is how it can be. So for me, that dream was very, very healing. I feel it truly changed my life. So it's another example of the belief system 